Morning all. The seed of an idea for a video has been brewing recently in the last few days. I was being wondering how to put this. Uh, we have touched on in this channel the importance of checking forcing moves, forcing variations, uh, to sort of assess tactical vulnerabilities sometimes. So even outrageous looking forcing moves could be examined uh, because sometimes the conditions change and they actually work. And that was demonstrated in quite a lot of blitz games last year. But one particular subject, uh, a branch of that subject to do with forcing sequences, I think is the ability to interrupt forcing sequences, which you might not really be able to see all the way through, but you just want the ability to interrupt sometimes the opponent's forcing sequences. And in this recent very dramatic example, I was playing step by step, and I am who I have beaten at least once before, but on this occasion it was a very difficult position. And I thought I was getting back in the game with these connected past pawns, even though down a lot in material. And I was getting quite excited by the past pawns. So I play f6 because I'm thinking f7, these pawns are actually uh, going to prove that uh, material inferiority doesn't matter if you've got two connected past pawns. But there's a nasty forcing move here, rook g3 check. And I play a good move here, avoiding uh, a disaster completely with king h4. I believe that's a disaster completely because rook takes g7 would zap my pawns. Goodbye, connected past pawns. So I play a good move, king h5. And in this position, my opponent, I think, blunders. I think he had a good position, uh, but I think this next move is a blunder, and I can actually celebrate my two connected past pawns. So I play f7, but in the commentary for this game, you'll see that I was, I was concerned about being mated. Uh, that's the problem. I, I couldn't quite believe it that these pawns were going to win. The opponent plays knight g6. And it's here that I kind of flip a coin. I, I, I rely on good luck that I'm not being mated or something. And I, I'm conscious I can't spend too long, and it's only a five minute game. But um, there's a concept here, I, I think. In, in the game, uh, I did play uh, a good move here, which wasn't followed up uh, correctly. The, the motivation behind the move uh, was incorrect. Uh, I could have, I could either play to queen this pawn or this pawn, and I did actually queen the f pawn. There's another alternative for under promoting as well, which is interesting to consider. But I promote the f pawn, but the intention is not to kind of interrupt the opponent's forcing sequences. I'm kind of relying on luck as though I'm hoping I'm not going to get mated. And sometimes it, I think it really is important uh, to be able to interrupt the opponent's forcing sequences. And here it becomes absolutely critical uh, to do so. Clearly if he takes a, I get a new queen, I'm okay. But he plays knight f4 check, and here, you know, maybe I'm just relying on luck. I, I blunder horrifically. Uh, I've only really got one move to stay in the game. But um, the principle here, as well, though, is this: this check can coordinate with with these pieces, and then I can queen again. Now, the the move I play is a total howler, but. Uh, as I say, it's it's like the, the the more general attitude of being able to interrupt the opponent's forcing sequences might be something which uh, stronger players have in their skill set. They don't want to be pushed around from A to B to C to D with the opponent having a lot of forcing moves, and they would even sacrifice lots of material to avoid going from A to B to C to D. If you see what I mean. And here, I didn't really seriously give consideration uh, to completely shortcutting uh, the opponent's forcing uh, sequences 
or as we used to say, docking computer. And my opponent's docking computer really triumphs here because now I do play a complete howler walking into a discovered check. I, I play the, the more obvious, the obvious move, not giving up a queen or anything. I play king h4 and I get mated. Whoops. Rook takes g7 and actually it's checkmate. That's, that's unfortunate. It's a discovered check and checkmate, quite abrupt. But I think there is uh, an attitude that really stronger players don't really like to be pushed around. That's, that's a really perhaps interesting principle that when you use forcing sequences, uh, you want to push the opponent around to go from seemingly okay position to maybe a potentially lost position or getting mated. But here, how do we interrupt? If we have that attitude of interrupting, we would sacrifice the queen. Okay, and that eliminates one of the attackers as well. And by eliminating one of the attacking pieces, the potential for being kicked around with, with forcing moves is far reduced. And here, after e takes, I mentioned in the postmortem g8 might not be that great um, because the opponent's got these passed pawns everywhere. So even though I'm the exchange up here, uh, this might not be a big deal at all. You know, with c3 coming up, but it, it turns out that in this position, uh, the interruption move knight g4, and this pawn is is triumphing. There's nothing to stop the, the king's too far away. But um, as I say, what particularly interested me uh, was was the principle here exposed um, quite consciously in my mind. This this new principle extending the ideas of docking computer is really to interrupt the opponent's docking computer. I in the ability, the option to interrupt. Uh, forcing sequences which the opponent are trying to impose on you. And I have some other examples, but um, if, if we want to quickly engine check this position here, it, it has become critical for black because he, he's just blundered. It, it is actually better. Um, if, if I played g8, I, I would be, uh, I think, getting mated, mating two as, as well, even doesn't help. So f8 is the only move to really be able to interfere with things. Although there is f8 under promoting to a knight as well. We'll have a quick check of that. Apparently that's not as good. King e7 might be the best move here. Takes king f6 and again I'm threatened with mate here, funny enough. And <laughs> I'd have to under promote another knight. If I promote a queen here, this is mate as well. This is getting quite pretty and ridiculous. So I promote another knight and we're talking three knights now. So this is quite fascinating. <laughs> Three knights, and it's interfering with the opponent's forcing move in dramatic fashion. How, how many are uh, or even analysis recently? Okay, so three knights here. So getting out of that mating net, and yeah, I could, I could have been better here. Oh dear. So knight f8, knight f5 check, full king. That's that's interesting as well. But the most convincing and the most brutal to interrupt the opponent's. Uh, dangerous resources and forcing and associated forcing moves is to queen the pawn and just sack the queen immediately. Now that that's a really, uh, to me, a radical example uh, that even if you can't calculate uh, that many moves ahead, you don't want to just take it on luck that you'll be okay. And I think that is an interesting trait to consider for one moment. Um, this trait, yeah, you don't want to be shifted from A to B to C to D, etc. Now let's look at another game example recently from my five minute archive, my, my PGN file. I've noted a couple of game, a, a couple more game examples recently. Now in this one, uh, against Top Patzer, if we can open it, nope. If I press return, okay. I was doing well as black and we'll flip the board. I know it's only five minute games. I had this what I thought was an absolutely uh crushing position with the double pawns don't don't help White's King saves thee. And I've got even a rook maneuver coming in. It looks absolutely killing, I thought. He plays rook g one, so the rook comes in for the kill, and it's all good so far. 
but um, what forcing sequences am I interested in? Um, okay, I didn't cre cre quite clearly work it out here, but um, intuitively, I think we must feel, in terms of defense, that the double pawns are not really going to help white. So maintaining the double pawns might be interesting. And this next move is, is on the wrong path to potentially expect the opponent to move the rook on bishop, bishop h4, which would make things easier. Well, the rook can't even move anyway, so he's, he's going to lose the exchange. But um, f forcing sequences, if I did get my queen there, then bishop g2 is just mating, and these double pawns are not helping. But um, it all fizzled out quite quickly, because the opponent is virtually forced for this exchange sack. And it fizzles out here, because now it's I've been repelled a bit, and even worse, I'm losing material, and f4 is coming. And it just was such a big turnaround, huge knight on e4. If we look at this position, the opponent kind of bypassed all the dangers of all my resources here, uh, with... with an exchange set just sitting on g3. Um, now here, instead of winning that material, maintaining uh, the double pawns, I think queen queen f5 at some point would be good. It's it's not really as clear cut as an example as the previous one, uh, but it just shows okay that you've got to be on the attacking side if you've got attacking resources. You, you want to keep your forcing move options and not be interrupted. So I, I guess kind of, kind of reverse logic on the same argument here. Um, but um, OK, that's not as clear cut as what uh, for the central theme. So let's go back and a more relevant example against the same person actually uh, in this game as white recently. Um, so knight d3, which I do have a video of, I haven't yet uploaded, but um, I got this horrendous position, but earlier there was an opportunity, I was playing white, where I was repelled back, my attack I was looking forward to in compensation for losing a queenside pawn. Uh, so I've just lost the queenside pawn. Follow me, if we go back here, so to this position, He's dismantled a little bit my centre, my c3 has gone. But now he plays a forcing move f6, and I'm looking forward to using the h6 square. So I play knight g4, and there's an apparently forcing move g5, which shields the h6 square. But should, you know, with the attitude of not, of not accepting the opponent's uh, forcing moves or not wanting to be involved in the opponent's forcing moves. There actually turns out to be a really crushing ignore option here for g5. So that's another major thing. The option to ignore the opponent's apparently, you know, forcing moves as well as as stop will stop them in their tracks. And here there's a cute little move which is basically saying I'm not going to be dragged from A to B to C to D. So again, interrupting the opponent's forcing sequences, although the first one was accepted. But if you look at f6, it is useful to put a knight on g4. It's eyeing uh, sensitive squares around the opponent's king, these two squares. So sometimes you can, you, you know, there's, there's a willingness maybe, the extra willingness to accept being kicked around from A to B is okay here at this point, because I've improved in, in many ways this this knight is now an aggressive knight ready to coordinate with the queen so it's it's okay here to sometimes accept the opponent's forcing move but here I don't really want to retreat my queen back and there's something really really strong here which I immediately regret after I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now Okay, if we think about the docking computer concept as well, to fight the opponent's docking computer, you can almost look at it like that, that there's a forcing sequence here, beginning with rook takes e7 check. Uh, so this is dismantling the opponent, for example, like this. It's pretty horrendous here. It's actually, you know, so that's mating. Uh, so rook takes e7. 
and you know we're talking a forced mate really it's a, it's a bit like a puzzle position if king g6 that doesn't really help the king getting uh chased like this is is not particularly healthy uh rook takes h3 only move and then and then mating so basically um i think that the basic point i'm trying to make and the second example is is a bit convoluted for the main theme i must admit uh but um I think the first example is is the most dramatic that with limited calculation time sometimes um you really want to stop the opponent's uh, resources generally in their track but the specific thing is you want to stop particular forcing sequences as well and often actually being prepared to sacrifice material uh helps in that area so I don't need to accept uh knight f4 check as as pushing my king around here from going say from c to d so i i i'm if i'm ready to just sacrifice here then i can look at this position and it gives much more opportunity for doing something about it if on the other hand i've gone completely without a fight i just get immediately mated with with g8 doesn't help at all so at least f8 was was on the right path giving the option uh for queen takes f4 um Okay, so I'm not entirely sure if my point's been <laughs> lost so far with these examples. Uh to to summarize again, what I was trying to bring out was it's it's very nice to be able to calculate forcing uh sequences and combinations and kind of get the opponent in real trouble uh through forcibly transitioning a certain position along a forcing sequence. But on the other side of the coin, it's also very nice at least to have the options even massively sacrificial options to interrupt uh the opponent's forcing sequences so that's something which maybe you haven't pondered recently <laughs> and and i think this is the most vivid example of them all really that even being prepared to sacrifice a queen uh to stop even if you can't see ahead and it's it's a speed game it's like a bullet game or a 3 minute game or a 5 minute game these these options to interrupt are, are kind of important uh to be able to have that attitude at least i think rather than relying on luck if you're going to get mated or not comments or questions on youtube thanks very much